We all know the 96-97 Lakers featured Shaq and Kobe. Obviously, it was uh, Shaq's first year in LA and Kobe's first year in the NBA. That's 20 years ago, which is mind-blowing to actually think about that. Uh, but what a lot of people don't realize is just how loaded with talent that 97 Lakers team was. I mean, as you said, as I said, sorry, Kobe was on that team. He didn't get a whole lot of minutes. He had a decent role coming off the bench. They actually had him playing point guard, if you can believe that, uh, for a period of time. And, of course, you had Shaq as well. You also had Eldon Campbell. Uh, for a short period of time, you had Cedric Sabolas before he was traded for uh, Robert Horry. Uh, you had Eddie Jones, who would turn into being uh, a multiple-time All-Star. Uh, Nick Van Exel also became an All-Star. Derek Fisher was also drafted too that very same year. So as you can see, uh, alongside Shaq and Kobe, you had a lot, a lot of talent on that squad. And there, there is a, uh, a perception out there that if, you know, they had a, a stronger coach, a better coach than Del Harris, perhaps they would have, uh, you know, been a bigger contender because with all that talent, they had probably their worst result, which was getting destroyed by the Utah Jazz in the second round of the playoffs. Um, the only one you could argue as being a worse result for that, you know, the last 15 years for the Lakers in terms of their talent was the 99 loss when they got actually swept by the Spurs. But that was during a lockout season, so maybe uh, you could put a little bit of an asterisk next to that. Um, but at the same time, I, I think, you know, I, I would go along with this being the the most talented squad, no, definitely not the best squad, obviously that goes to one of the championship teams, I would easily go with the 2001 team, but in terms of the roster talent, that, 2000, uh, that 97 Lakers, in my opinion, was, was their best, uh, had just <laughs> had no chance of reaching its potential, and that includes guys with Sha like Shaq as well, obviously Shaq was, you know, dominant a, a, a unbelievable play, but he had very a very limited post game. You know, he never really developed that post game. Uh, all he had was a baseline hook and a you know a, a, a you know almost like a baseline fadeaway. Actually, it wasn't really a hook, and a, a little mini hook that would come across the lane, and that was in his prime. You know, he he sort of had started to develop this uh, like some of his post game after the '95 Finals. He ne definitely didn't eventuate into a a serious post repertoire like uh, Kim Olajuwon or Patrick Ewing, which is a shame because had he had developed even half of a, a post game, he would have, in my opinion, uh, as well as you know, shooting say 65% from the foul line, which he always claimed he was capable of doing. Uh, you know, he got those famous quotes that he makes them when they count. Well, guess what? They all count <laughs> on the scoreboard, not just in the last minute. Um, had he developed those two, I think he would have gone down as the greatest player to have ever played the game. Uh, instead, he is, you could argue, being top five. Uh, I would put him in the top ten, and I would put him in the top three centers of all time, too. So that's uh, my little rant on, on Shaq, but this is more about Kobe, and, and uh, I inserted him into the starting lineup. Uh, alongside Derek Fisher, interesting note with Fisher, he actually wore the number four in this on, in this game. Obviously, that's incorrect, um, but I guess they didn't have a whole lot of uh, back then. You didn't have roster updates or anything of that nature. It's just you bought the game, you played the game, and then you waited until the next season <laughs> or next year's game, and then you bought the game again. Um, but yeah, so Derek Fisher's here. I didn't play Travis Knight, I mean, he's, there's no reason to, <laughs> even though he was a rookie as well, so they had a, a, a very loaded uh, rookie class with, with Kobe, uh, Fisher, speaking of Fisher, Fisher has to be a Hall of Famer, right, um, he, the, the funny thing is he, he'd probably be a Hall of Famer before he gets his uh, jersey retired by the Lakers, because the Lakers are very uh, stingy with their uh, jersey retirements, but uh You've got to put Fisher in that Hall of Fame class. Uh, the argument is, do you put Horry in as well? Uh, Horry has seven rings, and the rings count a little bit towards it. But um, the, the the way that Fisher Fisher was incredible. You know, he shot over seventy five percent from three in that um, two thousand and one playoff series against the Spurs. That was considered one of the great matchups leading into that series, and it turned into an absolute bloodbath. And a lot of that had to do with uh, Derek Fisher's production. 
Um, also had a lot to do with Kobe's production, so maybe we should talk about Kobe in a second. I did want to talk about Fisher and make the point for, for him being a Hall of Famer. Uh, in his second stint with the Lakers is what sold me on him being a Hall of Famer. Because uh, not so much in that first finals appearance uh, after rejoining them in the 2008 series, but the 2009 Think about how close that Magic team actually was with Dwight Howard and Rashad Lewis and, and Turkaloo and, and Rafa Alston and I think it was Courtney and Lee as their starting shooting guard. They very nearly won game two. It, it went over time. Courtney Lee had that alley-oop uh, play. Great play by Stan Van Gundy. But the inbound pass, a lot of people don't talk about this. They say it was a missed layup, but the inbound pass was slightly low. Now, if you look at that play again, and I'll link it in the description here so it's easy for you to find it. But if you watch that play again, when Lee's going up for it, remember, he's got limited time to get that shot up. There's less than a second. And he uh, he catches the ball mid-thigh. So just in between his hip and his, his knee. Had that ball been higher, it would have been much easier for him to just lay it in. But he had to bring it from his hip, or just below his hip, and then try to get it up there in a limited time. So, I don't really blame that on him, but that shows how close that Magic team were to being 1-1. And then they blew him out in Game 2. So, the Orlando blew them out in Game 2. Uh, game 3, sorry. So, this is, I'm, I'm recording this at 7am, so <laughs> apologies if I get something wrong here. But, they blew them out in Game 3. Granted, if the series was 1-1, maybe the Lakers would have taken that game, a little, the Game 3 a little bit more seriously. But, let's just run this hypothetical. So the Magic are close. They're up two games to one, and then they're, they're winning game uh, four in convincing fashion. Well, not so convincing, but they have it in control. Kobe comes down, has that incredible behind the head, behind the back pass to Gasol. Uh, they end up getting within three. Derek Fisher dribbles down and hits an insane shot, an absolutely ridiculous shot over uh, Jameer Nelson and now Stan Van Gunny cops a lot for that for playing uh, Jameer Nelson Jameer Nelson didn't play it that bad you know you, you, he had a hand in his head. it was just an insane shot and Derek Fisher does not get anywhere near the credit he deserves for making that shot so really they they uh, they were two plays away from being down 3-1 the Lakers were in that series instead of being up three games to one one of those plays was just luck, was the, the Courtney Lee miss. The other play was absolute brilliance by Fisher, and then he topped it off by hitting a huge three in the uh, overtime period, because that first three sent it to overtime. And, uh, of course, there's a bit of controversy regarding that, and it's legitimate controversy because, quite honestly, Kobe did elbow poor Jameer Nelson right in the face, which opened up uh, the open three, which Fisher calmly sank. Uh, so yeah, he turned the tide in that series. And even if Courtney Lee had missed uh, in this type of video, he, he did miss that shot. Two-two is a very different beast to being up three-one. So who knows how that series plays out? Regardless of that, and then Fisher still, you know, misses that shot or whatever, or either shot, quite honestly. So that's one series that he completely changes the tempo. Of. Then the very next series. You had a situation where Ray Allen set the NBA Finals record. Uh, I'll pause this now. I'll pause the recording now so you can watch the halftime show. Let's take a look at the halftime stats. Here are the key players. And we're back. So, the halftime show is something that they had in the older NBA lives, which they had it unique for every single team, uh, which I thought was a cool feature. So I thought I'd just let you guys watch that and get back to my points for Fisher. Then we'll talk about Kobe <laughs> in whatever time we have left. Uh, 
I'm, I'm not really talking about the footage going on right now. Shaq was dominant in this game, by the way, and Kobe was as predicted. Uh, it was an enigma. It was hard to really control him. He had no real shot on him, and also it probably didn't help him going up against the Michael Jordan clone, which was player 99, I think it was in this version. Anyway, so the very next series against Boston, the, the 2010 series, Ray Allen had one of the great performances in NBA history, or NBA Finals history. He set the record for threes made. And um, the Lakers had Kobe and Artest sort of switching out on him. And he was just getting around screens because they're, they're so much bigger than what, you know, they don't move as well as, say, a Fisher does. Well, maybe Kobe does, but Artest at that stage was just a power sort of player. So once, so come into game three, the the Lakers made the switch, and they put Kobe on Rondo primarily. Uh, Rondo is not the shooter that say, definitely not the shooter that Ray Allen is. Uh, and Fisher made the switch and was now chasing Ray Allen or, or around screens, and that completely changed that series, especially game three. Ray Allen actually made has the best three point shooting performance in NBA Finals history in Game 2, and he also has the worst in Game 3, and the biggest difference was was Derek Fisher's defense in Game game 3. Unbelievable job, and the rest of the series, Ray Allen did not play well, and so much of that has to be attributed to uh, the, the defensive performance of, of uh, Derek Fisher. Who, Ray Allen was actually in the same draft class as all these guys, as, as was Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson is the next video that's already been recorded. I just have to add some commentary to it. So yeah, so that's my case for for Derek Fisher being in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I don't think he'll be first ballot, but then that being said, I mean, if you're going to put, you know, I know it's Basketball Hall, Hall of Fame and the contribution uh, contributions to basketball, but the NBA is the biggest league that the, the, the basketball world has ever seen. That goes without saying. So your accomplishments in there are amplified. So I, I think... I think he, uh, if I had a vote, I would vote for him. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't get in it, but I think he absolutely should make it. Now, getting into this guy, Kobe, and NBA Live 97. I didn't mind this game. Um, it was a bit sort of, it felt a little bit ice skate-ish. And what I mean by that, it was it was hard to sort of control the players. Um, I did obviously remember to, to change the rules and make sure that the rules were in place. I didn't have that in NBA Live 96 and it turned into... Uh, I wouldn't say a rugby match, but it turned into a, a brawl. Um, it, it was a it was a good game. I, I upped the difficulty difficulty level quite a bit. Uh, I missed some foul shots with, uh, throughout the game, from what I can remember. Uh, there's Robin coming in for the tip dunk. That was kind of cool because that's the way he played. Shaq was a beast in this. His jump shot rating was uh, quite generous. Eddie Jones is another player I wanted to talk about, but I'll get to him if I have time. Kobe made some turbo turnovers, hit some clutch shots, but he, it wasn't enough. The, this this Bulls team, they, they did a good job in making this Bulls team as dominant as what they were, because I didn't think I played that badly, and uh, I still I couldn't beat them. Uh, Pippen was incredible throughout the game. Uh, the Jordan clone, I wish, looking back, that I actually uh, changed it up a little bit and um, made his name at least Michael Jordan rather than player 89 or 99 or 79 whatever it was uh it was a close game throughout and here we are 27 25 and uh it's still anyone's game but I need to get the ball into Shaq a lot more one thing I liked about this is it had this feature called longest run it was always cool to try and get a longer run and see how how far I went that's why I was scrolling down at the end of each quarter to see if I was exceeding it or or matching it at least um but Nick Van Exel as well was a good player in this game, but I, I I hurt myself by not playing Eddie Jones as much as I should have, or Nick Van Exel as much as I should have, because I wanted to, to showcase Kobe and Fisher, but in, in the long run that sort of hurt me trying to beat the Bulls in this game. Uh, what I also should have done is gone to the Bulls lineup of death. I mean, we've all heard about that with the Golden State Warriors, with when they go small, when they have Iggy alongside Draymond Green, and now of course you can have Durant, Thompson and Curry. The Bulls lineup at death would be just replacing Longley uh, with Rodman at centre, and then having Kukoc at the stretch four, and then Pippen and Jordan, and then I, I guess either Steve Kerr or um, Ron Harper. 
depending on whether you want defense or some some shooting to spread the floor out. Uh, that would have been a fun sort of lineup to to go up against, but uh, yeah. So his um, uh, this is on the PS2, uh, running the PlayStation One game. So the graphics are a little bit ordinary. I mean, just keep in mind it's a 20 year old game. Uh, makes me wonder though what the gap is going to be 20 years from now from the games that we're playing. Uh, I don't think it's going to be as significant as this. I mean, you, you put in Madden or you put in NBA 2K now, and it's it's a huge, huge gap. So 20 years from now will be well, Jesus, uh, 2037, <laughs> uh, and. I wonder what we'll be playing. Will we even be playing video games? You know, at that point, I don't know. It'll, it'll, it'll probably be something very different to what we're doing now in terms of holding a controller. But it'll, it'll be it's an interesting thought nonetheless. Uh, there's Sabolos. Uh, so obviously, Sabolos is in this game. As I was saying before, you know, they, they there were no roster updates back then. So Robert Horry was still on Phoenix, and yeah. Uh, I do have time to talk about Eddie Jones, I guess, uh, but I, actually no, I'll stick with Kobe as a rookie. Uh, I mentioned before that they played him as the starting, oh not the starting, but they they started him a couple of games, but primarily due to injuries. Uh, but they um, they were playing him a lot at the point. I guess what they wanted to do was have him develop into a point guard so they could keep him and Eddie Jones. It didn't work out that way. But what I would have liked to have seen. Is Eddie stay, and they played him at the small at the three, and I can't see why they didn't do that. I mean, they ended up trading him for Glenn Rice, and it worked out for the first championship. But after that, they traded Glenn Rice for Horace Grant, and Rick Fox, who played very well uh, for them throughout the the rest, well, the entire three people, more specifically the second, the second and third championship. His role was. Excellent defense. He was a f more physical defender than Eddie Jones. But, you know, with guys like Kobe, you know, Kobe could have guarded... You know, Kobe got quite big, like strong. So you could have put him in the, the post after that first title. Because remember, a lot of people don't remember this. Kobe was a very weak post defender for a long period of time. And then once he developed into... Like, he learned how... Gary Payton actually taught him how to do it in the uh, in an All-Star game. He, at an All-Star weekend, he asked him and he explained... Uh, how to get a little bit lower and what, what to predict what to predict in the post um, So you could have gotten away, but what I was thinking about like just imagine the perimeter defense with Eddie Jones Kobe Bryant in his prime Derek Fisher and you got Shaq patrolling the, the basket and protecting the rim that to me is is a unbelievable proposition uh, the only thing you have to worry about is is Eddie Jones was a uh, a much more streak shooter. He wasn't a, as consistent of a shooter as Rick Fox, and you needed that consistent spacing. But when you have guys like Robert Horry, and Derek Fisher, and uh, and Kobe himself, you have enough there to sort of space that out. You you know you're not you know, the other teams wouldn't have been able to get away with just sagging in on Shaq because you had other shooters too, uh, too. And plus, that's not an evil or all situation because Rick Fox was on that team anyway. It's not like you have to choose between Eddie Jones or Rick Fox. Uh, you can have both, so why not have both? Now, uh, we're heading into the last stage of this. Luke Longley hit some big foul shots. I was fuming at that because <laughs> I couldn't get a rebound and it, it just killed me because that was my opportunity. I could have gone for a... Uh, uh, an incredible finish with, with Kobe and uh, uh, matched up against quote unquote Jordan. Instead, they turned the ball over there, and <laughs> that was not cool. Uh, I, I ended up not really talking a whole lot about Kobe and uh, as, as much as I wanted to, but I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, the next one up will be the Allen Iverson uh, debut in NBA Live '97. So, thanks for watching, guys.
And that wraps up tonight's contest. The Chicago Bulls have won this game against the Los Angeles Lakers. Here's a look at the game stats. Let's take a look at tonight's EA Sports Player of the Game.